All right, hello everyone. Here, I'll probably open up streams that way I can read chats all at once. Got to do that. Of course, my token's expired. God. Give me a minute. Back to the music. All right, here we go. So, that was a wonderful performance of M1 Heart to Heart featuring the Game Grumps, for those who are curious. Anyway, let's get down to this. So, basically, I have been working on re changing up some things with my Patreon page, and one of the things that I've added in is basically a character redesign session. Or I take somebody else's OC that they suggest to me, tell me what they want changed about it, like maybe they're not satisfied with an element of the design or they want the character to get a rework, and then I kind of basically demonstrate what I would do to change the character. So this one is from Bell, who has this, char this OC here, a little Reaper dude. And he wants him to look more like uh, his brother's OC, like he fits in. I will grab. He wants him to fit in more with this kind of character. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be tweaking some of his elements and stuff and making him preserve the overall look. Um, but also tie him to the other one, and maybe replacing the scythe. So, let's get down to it. So, first things first, let's do a little bit of an analysis and figure out what's kind of defining about this character and what probably should be kept consistent. So. One of the most telling aspects of this guy is his silhouette. You'll get his silhouette. Very boxy, kind of tent shaped, and that's about what you get there. So this, you might also notice that like it kind of the cowl kind of comes down a point like that. And at the corners here, you have the other halves of the uh, cloak. So that's a pretty interesting and pretty um appealing little bit of consistency there. So, a few things that I'll probably do is I, I'll, I might go silent here and there, just because I'm drawing, but I'll just kind of be... Let me grab this guy. But I'll be just working and stuff, and, I'll, and I sometimes might work in silence, so don't complain if it gets silent. It's just how I work, because I get focused. So the overall thing we want to preserve is we want to preserve that pointed little tent-like shape. Probably going to be the most important thing. Doodle a little bit.
Yes, indeed. Prepare for awkward silences. You guys can ask questions, by the way, and I'll respond to them periodically. Things just to make conversation. I don't want to go over every single step I do, otherwise it'll take this will take me much, much longer. Anyone? Hello, fragging fox. Probably announce this to patrons directly as well. Here so far is good. And as for how you make children, um, well, you see, being a robot, I'm not concerned with that. So I don't know. My favorite movie franchise. I don't really have one. In I used to really like Pirates of the Caribbean. Now I couldn't really care less. Uh, the worst thing when redesigning a character? Um, see, what's the worst thing you can do when designing a character? Just don't do that. What's it like being a robot? Are there any problems? Next question. Floaty magnet limb robot lady. Uh, they're alright. I designed one character kind of like that before and wound up retconning her and never used her. And just abandoned her. That is probably my noise gate. It's probably too sensitive. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a second, this cat. I'm taking care of a cat right now, and she kind of has a tendency to climb up, try to climb up on things, and just managed to hurt herself because she slipped and paying attention. All right, so one thing that was mentioned is they want to keep largely the overall design consistent, but they probably want to change the weapon that this guy uses. The one thing that kind of seems a little bit more fitting, because a scythe is kind of generic. Are you doing this right when I start? This cat was like hiding under my bed, just sleeping. All up until the minute I start streaming. Then she comes out and just starts trying to climb on everything. Alright, so as I had said, he wants to keep the overall design fairly consistent. Try to tie it more to this guy. The one thing I'm thinking is give him a little bit of a wrap around his face. You can't really tell what his face is. They're just leaving it like an exposed skull. Um, one small thing also would maybe be making the eyes slightly split as an option. And then, considering this guy's thing is music, one other option, instead of a scythe, a little bit of an idea. Make him kind of like a grave digger and give him a shovel that is also a base. Very awkwardly angled shovel, though. Or well, shovelry! No, shovel probably wouldn't be that good for digging, considering it's got strings on it. Whatever, fantasy world. I don't need to conform to your rules of logic. One other little change I'm gonna put in here is make his body a little shorter.
Random question also for people who are watching the stream over on YouTube. Would you guys want me to stream games to YouTube? Because I do stream games every now and then, but I do it through Twitch. What would you guys want to see? My opinion, Twitch kind of makes more sense for game streaming, and then I was kind of intending to use YouTube for more doing art stuff. I kind of want to see what people suggest. Would you guys rather watch streams on Twitch or would you rather watch streams on YouTube? I can do both. I was just wondering if people who subscribe to me would actually care to watch streams like that, because my channel's mostly been dedicated to stuff like art and animation, so doing game streams might be a little bit out of place. After the stream, I was actually planning on streaming some near, but I'll do it to both platforms if people are interested here as well. I don't think this is actually Shenimation's character, I think this is a commissioned character. So I don't follow Shen Shenimation, so I wouldn't really know. And it's not really a technicality. Just because somebody draws a character doesn't mean they own them. It means they own the art for that character.
hearts on fire from desire they have a disease I'm gonna have that stuck in my head thanks M1 playing in the background is Oh shit, it's time for fucking Sonic music. I've never played any Sonic game aside from Sonic Adventure 2. Nope, not even the Genesis ones. Actually, I've probably touched them before, but I've never owned the uh, system to play them. I played Sonic Heroes, and I played Sonic Adventure 2, and that's about it. Something kind of interesting about Shenmation style, which I'm going to comment on this just because um, he's the one who did the original character design. You can kind of notice that like he's got a really good grasp of like line thickness as well as like kind of shapes. You might notice in the original sketch for the top of this, I kind of did like a round, simple top. While well, changing it to this kind of weird beveled shape kind of helps keep it in the original style that it was drawn in, and is a little bit closer, and it also winds up looking a lot more dynamic. Like a little bit of curvature here and there, even for straight lines, can be a very good tool to use.
The green lines? Oh, that's something unique to CSP, um, Clip Studio. Currently, I'm on what's called a vector layer. Which a vector layer, it works exactly like a line art layer, except all these things, these lines I've made, are actually all paths. So I don't actually have. So if I actually scale this around, it actually will not pixelate. It will. It will stay as a. Um, it'll basically stay as what it is. So. Some things that this allows me to do is when I draw two paths, there is a vector eraser that I can use, which will delete all, everything on a line up to a path intersection, which is insanely useful. It allows me to rapidly make corners like that. Normally, you'd have to erase this manually like this. That basically allows me to do it much more precisely and a lot more accurately. The other thing it also allows me to do is if I draw two lines like this, and I want these to be treated as one object, if I select this, this can come off. However, if I overlap them, then I go to Connect Vector Line, which is under the Correction Tools. I can overline these, and now they are one object. This is just to show me where I'm drawing. It actually doesn't actually draw anything, it's just where I'm operating. I'm applying the Join operation to anything underneath. I use that to rapidly get rid of like short corners and things like that and to connect gaps. And the reason why I want to fill in gaps is not just to simplify my art, but also to make coloring a little bit faster. But this allows me to basically take elements that I've drawn and scale down just those elements without having to make complex selection marquees and stuff like that. Yeah, CSP is a really fucking powerful tool. It has a few interface issues, admittedly. Like, it doesn't use... Like, a friend of mine was telling me it actually does not use the native Windows API. So, as a result, um, I actually was running into numerous issues with um, stuttering a bit until I actually changed my um, screen scale to, like, 101%, which was re a really weird workaround for that. I was also running into some weird graphical issues with um, plug-and-play features managed to get those fixed, but like, beyond that, the tools themselves are some of the most artist, they're designed strictly with artists in mind, and they're really powerful. It has the, it has like the best optimization tools when it comes to um, polishing up your work, in my opinion. Oh, you haven't even I haven't even gotten to coloring yet. You'll be excited to learn about that. I've actually thought about doing like some tutorials just about CSP and the program itself. Like I've kinda done with Flash. So if people would be interested in seeing that, I might do that.
Uh, you mean like screen tones? Like this? It's screen tones are actually insanely easy to do. There's just this option up here. Just click that. And you can turn it on and you can modify the settings and stuff like that. Oh, you mean like special effects? Maybe. Maybe. I will see. God, I fucking love Toho music. So good. Alrighty, so now time to demonstrate how Clip Studio can work. So what I've done is I set this up as a reference layer. I currently have my one tool to refer only to reference layers. So when I do this, it actually makes a selection based on just the line art. And this is also why I sealed in the gaps, because stuff like that happens. But anyway, doing the selection, delete, delete, I can quickly just chunk out the alpha, and then adjust it if need be. But already, right there, I have just the alpha set up. And I can go in and I can grab these other colors, and when I use the paint bucket, likewise, it's set to only refer to reference layer. It will color inside the lines perfectly. And because these are vector layers, instead of going up to where the line exists, it actually does a calculation to determine where the center of the line is. This little red line you see? Like, let me actually just do an example. Do a quick do a cross section like that. If I fill this in, and I delete this line, you can see that the. Or actually, let me put it on a different layer so you can see better. You can see that it went up to the center line and included the center line as well. And that basically allows it to fill exactly up to where I want. I, I believe, can do something similar, though CSP honestly does it the best out of all the major programs out there. It's all just an efficiency tool. You don't obviously want to rely on it 100%, because sometimes it will not... It has a hard time getting small gaps like this, so then you want to go in manually. Or, like, if you have a very thin line, It'll leave bad pixels. You want to touch it up. But for general use, it's very, very powerful, especially if you use a thicker line art style. So, very useful for like panning and stocking styles. Like that. As you can see down here, that didn't wind up getting um, filled, or didn't wind up getting cut properly. So I had to go in and cut it after the fact. But it still works. And as over here, you can see there's gaps, so I want to go over those manually, fill those in. Um, I want to turn off the alpha lock here, because this is 
filling in choppily. Just fill it in manually, then turn it back on. Stuff like that. And yeah, because this is all vector layers, I can basically drag the individual nodes here and pull it out. Which is really fucking cool. Color handle should the shovel get? I think I'm probably just a dark. Gonna do conventional shell shading because this isn't really a commission redesign. I'll be honest, I don't really pay attention to Schmorky. Um, I know they've dealt with things themselves, but I don't know anything about the whole story, no do or, nor do I follow that story at all. From what it sounded like, which is a long, long, long time ago, to be totally honest. Oh, that was still relevant. But...
It sounds more like they got into it. I don't know, actually. In a lot of cases, in stories and stuff where people try to villainize someone when both parties were kind of at fault. But I've also seen case, plenty of cases where one party was clearly a, more of an aggressor. Ready. Go. Save this really quick. So yeah, overall the changes that I made here weren't really that major, because they weren't requested to be major. Um, actually I just something I forgot. This is one other thing useful about CSP is that like if I want to make cuts like that, it's much easier to make them in CSP than it was in like Photoshop. So yeah, overall changes. Profile and silhouette and build are all still generally the same. Here. So, yeah, profile and stuff, all the same. Eyes, I changed the color a little bit to make them blue just to match the lantern. Swapped out his weapon so it's no longer a scythe, and instead gave him a shovel that doubles as the bass guitar. As the other character that I showed here, Mordred, he uses a microphone as his weapon. So that should all be kind of interesting and stuff. Maybe this could have like a speaker in it or something. Undead death metal band. So yeah, that's about all there is to that. Um, I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go get some food. I'm going to cut the stream because then I'm going to restart the stream in a minute. And it will be for gaming. So if you guys want to watch near. Watch me play near, that'll be going up in around like 10 15 minutes. Otherwise, um, if you ever want to participate in one of these character redesign things, I do them once a month through my Patreon. So, yes. That is about it. I'm gonna cut the stream here, and I shall see you guys all in like 10 15 minutes or so. I'm gonna go eat some chicken salad sandwich stuff. You mess with the cat for a little bit, just so that way she calms down. I shall see you guys all in a bit, and I will relay this to the chat as well, so in case anybody doesn't hear. So, we'll be back in a bit.